everyone welcome to another video so instead of doing an eyeshadow palette look i am going to go ahead and take this video to discuss and use some of the products i got in the recent sephora sale i ended up placing just one order and i was going to place a second smaller order specifically for the luminous silk blushes and maybe like one or two other doodads but i forgot I indirectly save myself money. Who needs to resist the temptation of things when you can just keep forgetting that you wanted to buy, like, you know you want the thing, but you keep forgetting to buy it day after day after day, like. Now, the other thing is that as of right now when I'm filming this video, I am currently taking care of some sick kittens. They are on the men, but they're taking up a lot of my time. I do have to feed them once every three to four hours, including overnights. So I am a little bit fried and my filming schedule, of course, and everything else that I would like to get done is kind of on the back burner while I focus on A, feeding the kittens and be catching in some sleep between feedings so life's a little bit of a mess and yes i have nails on one hand and no nails on the other hand because i did one hand and then i fed the kittens and then i still haven't done the other hand yet uh, my first sephora haul was not like the biggest sephora haul that you'll ever see on the internet but it was pretty substantial monetarily speaking i do plan in advance for these and i try my best to make the bulk of my sephora purchases for the year inside of these sales if i can mostly i'll be honest i think my haul was like half blush so i cannot use every single thing i got because i cannot use every single blush that i got i'm going to start off with my usual favorite primer combination which is currently the vitamin enriched eye base and then the dominate cosmetics primer i've I've been using the- I tried using the hydrating eye cream at first because I got that like half off, um, you know, a couple months back, but it just really did not do anything for me. So during 21 Days of Beauty, the eye base went on sale, so I got that. It's doing alright. I still don't think it's quite as deeply watery and cooling and smoothing it's not quite like to that extent that the Jaclyn under eye primer was i don't know if it if, if i think what i'll do is if the under eye primer ever goes on like super deep sale again i may pick up like one or two but i'm not gonna buy it full price i definitely do miss having it though there's nothing quite like it on the market it really is such a shame so um depending on how long i can hold out without it i may eventually just break down and buy it I don't know what I'll do when I finally run out of these. Um, but my filming has been very sporadic, which is why you'll notice that things that seem like they should have been emptied by now have not been because I've been, I'm lucky to even film like once a week right now. My goal usually is to film three to four times a week, but I am lucky to even get one in right now these days. I also got back into playing Monster Hunter because the Sunbreak title update came out and I'm anomaly farming and I, I got sucked into the vortex and I see no escape. <laughs> I've just been playing Monster Hunter every single night. Mm. Anyways, if anyone else plays Monster Hunter, please let me know. I'm gonna use the Givenchy Prisme Libre Glow Foundation today because I want to use an easy base that will for sure anything on top will look good. And I, this finish is also very customizable because if I mattify it down with powder, then it turns into like a matte foundation. But if I minimally powder it, then it can stay really nice and glowy. I think this is the most versatile foundation in my collection right now, and so it is one of my favorites. It is also on its own very deeply hydrating. It goes on like a really thick moisturizer. My only qualm with it really is the fact that both this and the matte version I screwed up and don't have the right shade. A matte foundation that's lighter than your skin tone is just going to look straight up ashy, so I really really wish I hadn't done that little goof and I had gotten the right shade of the matte foundation, but I forgot to exchange it. I have been considering getting the Synchro Skin foundation for a while, but it looks like it must be being discontinued or something because the normal foundation is sold out in almost every single shade now. The Radiant foundation was still in stock and I considered getting it, but I seriously thought it would just not be a smart idea because I already have this. I don't really know how that Shiseido one is going to be any different from this, like medium coverage radiant foundation. And I also just realized I forgot to color correct my under eyes, so we're off to a great start. So I didn't really get any new complexion products from Sephora because I've just been using what I've been enjoying. So I'm going to first use the Deseek concealer palette. I'm going to use this, I'm going to use the salmon shade in here to try and do a little bit of color correcting. I kind of like to mix these two shades, this one. And then this one very quickly color correct my under eyes i usually use the rare beauty under eye brightener underneath my foundation and then i'm just gonna go in with my tried and true jx professional concealer this time i haven't been using this one as often as i used to because i've been trying so many other concealers but it's nice to sometimes just go back and use what you know
You guys have to see this. Hold on, this is really, really important. Look at her bony. It's so soft. Does she not just have the softest belly ever? She really likes to sleep underneath the desk that I use to hold all my makeup. It, like there's a gap between the bottom and the floor. She really likes to, when I'm filming, sleep between the gap. <laughs> so sometimes I'll see her, her feet sticking out and if I poke them, she'll get really like, she'll like, you know, swat at me a little bit. First things first, I am gonna go ahead and use some setting spray. My skin is a little bit dry because I'm filming in the evening because I've just been busy all day and I tried to catch a nap during the day while they were at the vet unfortunately when I have like you know I'll get really anxious and then I can't fall asleep so I didn't get any sleep and one thing I really like about Shin Kai that he said before is that when he's storyboarding and animating and planning out the scenes he actually does work on that in tandem with the music so he's not making the storyboards and then sending it off to the musicians like okay now compose for this he's actually tweaking things as the music comes and the music gets tweaked as he storyboards until him and the composers so in this case rat wimps arrive at the finished product so the visuals and the audio end up so heavily intertwined with each other and that's why i think his particularly the scenes that are voiceless, they're silent, it's just the music, particularly those parts of his films are some of the most impactful parts of the movie, and I think it is because of the fact that he is able to do that. Love, love, love it. You gotta tell me what you think about that movie if you watched it, and if you like Shin Kai's work at all. All right, so one of the things I did get was I got the Rare Beauty bronzer stick. I have been interested in this ever since I saw people go absolutely bananas over it, but when it first came out, I took one look at the shade range and I said, meh, it's not for me. I do not like warm bronzers. I especially don't like red bronzers. So the Flower Beauty bronzer that I tried for months to get my hands on and was so excited to finally get, I'm actually going to have to declutter because it literally shattered my heart into a billion million pieces when I first applied it and it was just straight red. Part of me really wanted to try the new Jones Road rosy toned bronzers and Max also coming out with rosy toned ones because I wonder if by rosy toned they mean more of like that pinky mauvey desaturated undertone as opposed to straight red but also part of me is really scared. <laughs> so I may get the MAC one first just because if I get it from Ulta I can return it. When Rare Beauty announced that the shade range of these bronzer sticks was expanding one of the shades that they announced that they were making is bright side which is the second lightest shade so not the lightest lightest shade but the second lightest shade cool undertone so i got really really excited and i bought it and i do want to do a bronzer bronzer roundup video later because i feel like my bronzer preferences are kind of atypical Maybe not like for Asians, but they can be pretty atyp atypical in the Western market. It borderline has olive undertones, but it's a little too yellow for me. I'm more of that neutral olive. However, if you notice, it kind of matches. You see the shadow cast on my neck here? This is shadow when my neck is in shadow. It is the exact same shade as this bronzer stick here. Even though it's not my preference, it actually kind of blends into my skin tone really well and I think with the right makeup look especially if I just want to look super super natural it would actually work really well plus as you have seen me applying this while I'm talking I'm not even really thinking all that hard I just apply it onto the brush and then I just pat it on like this blending itself so I definitely can thoroughly recommend this if the shade range is up your speed I know everybody's bronzer preferences are super different it does offer some uniqueness to my collection where if it was as cool as Laguna or Terra or even Fenty Amber which I don't have but would like to repurchase someday then I guess it would be a little redundant because I already have those shades so this actually kind of offers something new to my collection so I'm honestly not mad about it the only thing with this lid though as with any other stick product be really careful if you put the lid on wonky you'll like kind of smear the product inside so this is definitely a super big win for me even if you didn't have a Sephora sale it's one of the cheapest bronzers at Sephora the quality is outstanding okay and then in the spirit of Sephora I've been seeing this powder trending again and it is the Givenchy Prisme Libre powder. I do have the limited edition Chinese New Year packaging from I think two years ago, but this is a permanent color. And I'm going to use this today just because it's available at Sephora, so I just thought why not. And I've been seeing a lot of people on YouTube talk about it all of a sudden, which I mean, not mad about it because this is a really, really good powder. It's kind of more of like an old school classic mattifying powder, but it is very smoothing. It was one of the first powders I tried that didn't also dry like the heck out of my under eyes while still looking really mattifying, so 
I still really like it. I still hold on to it. I have a discontinued shade that I actually use as a face palette when I travel. <laughs> now the four color thing, I don't really notice a difference but it is really really soft and pretty i did get the rare beauty liquid blushes but i don't think i want to use those today i have a different blush i want to use so i'm just going to set my whole face yeah i think what i'm going so the one eyeshadow quad i did get i didn't get any big palettes this time i seriously considered getting the dominate cosmetics one but dominate cosmetics does do sales on her site every now and again which is more than 20 percent off so i'll just wait and i'll buy from there because i kind of want to try her powder and some of her other stuff anyway so we'll just i'll just whenever i have budget i just haven't had the spare coin right now but i did pick this up i did not pick up the pat mcgrath bronzers because of the similar reason that I initially didn't get um, the Rare Beauty ones. After seeing swatches and everything, I realized the lightest shade is going to be so not my jam, but I could not say no to one of her quads. Now this has the less amount of product smaller pans that her quads have had lately. I have been pretty disillusioned with her brand, I'm not going to lie, but I do really like her quads, so I was very excited to see this. I'm going to do my eye primer and my eyebrows off camera, and then I'll be back and we can actually get started on these products because I think I have rambled for long enough. They escalated far beyond my wildest imaginings. I promise you this was not done on purpose. So the brows were a choice, but that's okay. I did use the Rare Beauty eye primer, so we're going to do something that is basic, but at the same time, hopefully it'll turn out pretty intense. These shadows look like they have promise, especially the gold one. I'm gonna start off with the two mattes and then I'll use the, I've, I've got all my wires crossed. I'm gonna start off with the mattes and then I'll move into the shimmers. I did, I did get a lot of kick up in the pan, which is not super normal. Most of her mattes and her motherships are actually pretty firmly pressed. So I have kind of definitely made it known before that I feel a little bit conflicted about her standard matte formula in her motherships. I feel like it's not as dry eyelid friendly as Natasha Denona's matte formula, but then the formula in her quince is a lot more powdery and soft and almost kind of creamy-esque, more in line with Natasha Denona's formula, and so I actually really liked the mattes in her little quince. And this brown is giving a ton of kick up in the pan, and so as a result it is applying and blending a lot easier, but I think if you're used to her mothership formula then you will find the powderiness of this to be a surprise. Um, but yeah, you can see I already very quickly established a frame for this look. This is definitely much softer than her mothership mattes though, it's not the same as her mothership matte. Usually in my experience her quads, her Lux quads, have the same matte formula as her motherships do, so I'm, I was kind of surprised in a good way though, this is a good surprise. And I already use such a light hand with my eyeshadows anyways. My eyeshadow palettes, even if I use them a lot, will still use barely used because I'm always like handling them like a baby. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Okay, we are getting somewhere very quickly. I like that. I want to go ahead and I know sometimes with the eyeshadows, if you go into a shimmer first and then try and build a matte on top, it doesn't really work. But I frequently find myself unable to really establish how dark I want things to get until the shimmer is laid down. So I'll go ahead and continue to kind of frame the look as best I can, but I am going to I'm using the lighter matte on my lower lash line now because I don't want my lower lash line to be super heavy for this look. I'm going to try and keep it a little bit more lifted. This is actually a lot darker than I thought it would be. I thought this matte would just be kind of almost transition-y-ish. Just making up words now, but it's actually, it shows up. I like this a lot. It almost, it's like a warmer version of kind of like cork or soba, but it's darker and warmer. I'm not like saying I'm reviewing this or anything because obviously I'm not wear testing this, but so far it's so good. I'm gonna go ahead, I know my nails are long on this finger, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my finger for this. This definitely feels very in line. I know it's not, I don't think it's a baked shadow, but it feels in line with her baked formula. I imagine if you wanted to use a tackier base or a glitter adhesive, or glitter primer or whatever, you would probably get more payoff. It does feel a little bit chunky on my finger, but I did not see any actual like plasticky chunky thingies in the ingredient list. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just dump this on my eyelid. It can become more of like a sparkly topper, but I'm gonna kind of start off by establishing the range, which is pretty much all over my eyelid. I'm gonna go in with a brush, add another layer, and make it more opaque. I'm having the kind of brain fog also where I will just stop complete- I will stop mid-sentence and I will not know what I want to say. Like I was at the doctor's office, I was doing my cardio follow-up, and I was trying to explain to the PA my symptoms and everything, and I just kept dropping my sentences. 
like four or five times I would say the first half of a sentence and I just couldn't even finish it. I would be like, I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't finish the sentence. And even now, like now I'm trying to explain it to you and it's, that's what's happening to me. My, my brain fog has gotten so bad and I didn't realize that it was also connected to POTS and dysautonomia and stuff like that. But yeah, that's apparently also a symptom is just the fatigue and the brain fog because your brain's just not getting the circulation it needs and feels great. I mean, I feel really intelligent when I can't even finish a sentence. Like somebody could ask me a yes or no question and if they ask me in the moment that my brain just stops wanting to work, I will not even know if I should say yes or no, period. I'll be like, what did you say? Like, I heard it, but I didn't understand it. It's, it's, it makes me feel like a total idiot. It doesn't make me look smart on camera either, obviously. So if I ever seem to stumble across my words uncharacteristically, then please excuse me, I am trying my best, but some days I just really just can't really function. <laughs> Cognitively speaking, my, my, my ability to use my prefrontal cortex just sometimes isn't there and I don't like it and it's not fun. I basically got as opaque of a layer as I wanted to get. Now I feel like if I pack on too much, I'm gonna start feeling this. This does feel kind of chunky on my eye. Like I could definitely see this shade irritating you if you have sensitive eyes because even though it doesn't have actual plastic chunks, the glitter particles are still pretty sizable. Like I can still, I feel it when I blink. I don't feel it in the sense that it's a thick cake layer of eyeshadow. Definitely doesn't feel like that. This eyeshadow feels thinner than paper. Like it feels weightless. It's that the individual glitter chunks, even though they're not actually made of plastic and therefore they should be eye safe, that I, I can feel it. <laughs> I can kind of sort of, if I focus really hard, I can feel the flakiness of the eyeshadow. So if you have really sensitive eyes, be careful. I also will say I tried to pack it on with a brush and a lot of the flakes just kind of fell off. So definitely this is going to be, this gold shade right here is going to be a shade where the tackier your base is, all the better for you. So now I'm just going to start reworking in the darker matte and I want to now deepen up the eye look to where I want it to be now that I know how intense that gold is. It is, I think, very well curated. I love how dark this brown can go. Like This is not even the darkest it can be. I'm still not, I'd say this is maybe 75% of as dark as it can be because I'm doing such thin, tiny layers. So just imagine if I were to be using a more dense packing brush, which I'm not because I don't want it to be that dark today, but I think you can imagine it being significantly darker, which is great. I I always love when my palettes have as wide of a range of light to dark as possible, even quads. And I do really appreciate that this brown is actually quite surprisingly neutral. It's not true neutral, it does have a little bit of warmth to it, but it is by no means ultra warm. At first glance, this seems like it would be another generic warm quad, but it's actually quite balanced. Like it feels like it shouldn't be as interesting as it is, but it is, which is great. And now I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of that lighter brown. Again, this shade did actually show up quite a bit on my skin tone, so I'm just gonna use this to really blend things out. But with, I don't wanna lose too much control over where my eyeshadow is. I feel like I may have already taken it too far. I'm just gonna use my finger really quickly. And I'm taking my time applying it. I think all things considered, I have not taken that much time at all. And I'm just gonna leave the lower lash line as that color. I don't wanna take the dark brown on it like that. So I'm just gonna use another layer of that same matte color and just really darken it up to the darkest that that matte can be. A lot darker than I expected, which is great. And this is with me using a softer synthetic from Luxie, which doesn't really pick up as much pigment. I'm still able to get such a rich result. All right, and then I'm going to now see this shade here. This is more of just your standard smooth metallic, definitely not chunky in the slightest. So again, as I said, we've got some really great textural contrast going on. So this is going to go on my lower lash line. Now this shade technically is a little too dark to be a true highlight on my skin tone. Like I could not put this on my nose. I would totally get a cast, but with the backdrop of these darker shadows, it looks like a highlighter. And it's actually, because it's a little bit darker, it's actually gonna be quite understated on me. This is definitely her borderline satin and shimmer formula. It's not my favorite. Admittedly, I much prefer, of course, her foiled metallics and her really bedazzling baked shadows. Like, of course, I love those. But in the context of this quad, I may not like the finish of this as a personal preference, but this is the perfect finish to complement the other three shades in this quad. Like, do you see how the smoothness of that shade really just 
complements everything else in this quad so perfectly. Now, if it had been a little bit brighter, it would definitely show up on me as a true inner corner highlight, but it's still, still bright. So that's gonna be what the look is looking like right now. I love it. I am gonna just take a little dollop of this and just touch it very lightly up here. I do really like bringing my inner corner highlight kind of partway through the look. I feel like it just adds that last level of finesse. And I'm using very minimal pressure here. That is this look so like just simple and easy and great. <laughs> the only thing is that a shade like this, the gold, it is going to be a little bit on the higher maintenance side of things just by the nature of what it is. And of course the mattes were actually so much easier to work with than her normal motherships. I'm like really happy about that. So I think I'm going to pop on some lashes just so that I don't have to do mascara tonight even though my lash lift is pretty much like worn all the way down. So I'll be back and then we'll work on the rest of my makeup with the other stuff I got. I wanted to try a new pair of lashes because I haven't actually used like a new pair of lashes in a while. I've just been using my House of Lashes one so I wanted to try something new. Just So I'm using the Batty Bunny lashes from Doe Lashes which have the cutest packaging ever. If you've ever had those white rabbit candies, if you know, you know. They're, I think they're a little too voluminous for this look. They give off this very strong, dolly, almost artificial effect, which I don't think is harmonious with the concept of this look, which is not that. So, oops. So I'm gonna go ahead and darken up my look a little bit because otherwise I think a lot of these shades are just completely swallowed up by these lashes. Totally my bad, but that's okay. So I'm just going to add more of the dark brown, really make sure that that depth is visible. These are very nice lashes. I do really like doe lashes. I just was not these looked a lot shorter and less fluffy than they actually do on my eyes and specifically the whole individual spike thing. I don't know what I was thinking. See, this is, I don't know what I was thinking. I completely missed the vibe check on this look. Is I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna modify this look slightly. So I am gonna go ahead and take that dark brown and I'm going to use it kind of like an eyeliner. And I am gonna go ahead and just lean into that dolly aspect of this look. You can, you can get a very exaggerated effect, but in my case, I'm just going to do it very naturally. And I'm going to just lean into making this look look a little bit more dolly. And then I'm going to take that same shadow and I'm going to stick it in the inner corner. Instead of liner, I'm using eyeshadow today, so it's softer. You know, sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches. And I'm not going to fill in this gap with like white or anything, because that's going to just completely... <laughs> That's gonna completely clash with this look. I'm, I'm gonna leave it very just natural inside. Okay, so I think the look has been sufficiently rescued and we are out of the woods. So that is gonna be what my eyes are looking like now. Actually, it's really cute. I think I think I rescued it. <laughs> okay, so for blush, I really want to go in with I think this should work, right? Maybe this is a little too coral for this, you think? This is better. Okay, I'm gonna try using this. I do have really high expectations. This was a very expensive product for the size that it is. It's, it's cute, but expensive. There's only a couple shades in stock on Sephora, like at all, but I do remember when it first launched, it kind of sort of had like a lot of shades, but then it didn't, but then it did, but then it didn't. All I know is that it's a good coincidence that one of the shades I wanted, 45, is also in stock at Sephora. The other one that I wanted the most is 30, which is also in stock at Sephora, but then there was one I wanted back in the day, which I think is, I just don't know where it what? I was going to get the NARS liquid blush and I just saw the reveal of the new liquid blush from NARS which makes me worry that they're going to discontinue the old one that I wanted and now I'm debating if I should go ahead and get those before they get discontinued. If any of you have ever used the NARS liquid blush, the one with the pump, please let me know in the comments if it's good. If it's getting replaced with this one which looks like it is dewy, has no pigment, and is half the size for the same price, then I should probably get on it, right? I'm going to use this Sigma Flat Kabuki. I actually find that for some cream formulas this works. It's so dense, but it's very soft. I know the 40% off sale is going on right now, and I really wanted to pick up the Dominique and Samantha Ravindal brush sets, but I just don't have the money. Even 40% off, I really just, I don't have the money. I, I It's just not smart. I am filming the day before the Blackpink Encore pre-sale goes on, so the reason I haven't been spending money as much as I wanted to is because I don't know if I'm gonna go or not. 
and depending on how much the tickets cost, I may go ahead and still bail, but I at least wanted to sign up for pre-sale and have money set aside so that in case I can't actually afford to go, I will go. So I like, I joined the pre-sale and everything. I actually did it right this time. I didn't screw up like I did last time. I would have much rather gone to Atlanta instead of New Jersey, but so at least for New Jersey, I got it right. Like I just got the confirmation email that I'll get a text tomorrow. Fingers crossed that it's not like $5,000. Okay, so this is the shade 45. If I, I think I may use the House Labs blush to blend this out, but um, I do remember from what I've seen online, it's kind of a stiffer cream formula. Yeah, pretty stiff. And yeah, you can kind of see like the clumping. Oh, it's pigmented. Oh, I shouldn't have gone in as hard as I did. I like didn't see much coming off, so I thought it wasn't transferring to the brush. Okay, so there is there was some clumping that came off onto my cheek because I think I put way too much on the brush. After tapping on my face, the clumping has blended out. This right here, this is pimples and also a freckle. So now as you can see, I'm tapping it out. So I definitely did not need to push into the product as hard as I did. I definitely put way too much on my brush because I wasn't aware of how much pigment I was actually getting off because I've never used the product before. So even though it felt stiff like nothing was coming off, that was a lie. Okay, so this cheek definitely is a little bit heavier, but never minding that, I like it. I like it. It's cute. I like it. Oh, it's so pretty. I like it a lot. I'm glad I got this. This makes me really happy. It's almost it's almost a little too orange for this look still, I will say. It's a little bit too orange for this look, but it's burnt enough and dark enough and has a little bit of that burnt brick feeling to it that it passes. Oh, I like this. Yes, yes, me like. Yeah, definitely I did not need to push and rub as hard as I did. I thought for a second that I, Sephora had sent me expired product, but no, this is fine. It's just, this is a stiffer cream product, so it goes on almost like a powder. It feels cream to powder, and as you can see, it has a really natural finish. It's not glowy at all, not dewy at all, so it went on top of powder really well. In fact, I feel like if you put this on top of an unset base, you may have trouble getting it to like blend out. It may move your foundation because it is stiffer. So for all intents and purposes, this feels like a cream product that just kind of behaves like a powder, which is like high-key my favorite kind of cream. I cannot wait to keep using this. I love this and I definitely hope to be able to add more colors. I think I definitely am gonna want more shades of this. Okay, and then I am going to blend all of that out just a little bit with this shade here. I'm gonna use this brush from Laura Lee Los Angeles. This is a really, this is the softest, fluffiest, airiest blush brush that I have in my entire collection, this right here so soft so i'm going to use this and i'm just going to use a little bit because i know it's quite pigmented and i just want to use this to kind of make sure that the blush from giorgio armani is nice and smooth and even again dots are pimples and freckles my skin has not been in very good condition lately which makes perfect sense with my interrupted sleep and whatnot so my skin has been reacting accordingly <laughs> and i am also going to tuck a lot of it underneath here to connect the blush to my eyeshadow which i really like to do and you can see here that it actually it definitely can be a very pigmented peach blush if i want it to be this these blushes did not need to have this much product or have pans this big like it is pretty it's nice to hold the mirror is nice and sizable but like i don't actually know who needs this much blush oh well, this is nice it's so matte too I definitely am a matte blush person. I'm very particular about glowy blushes. I very, very, very rarely wear glowy blushes, as you probably can tell on this channel. And you can kind of see, so you can kind of see here, the difference in tone. See how this is more peach and this is more orange? So you can actually see the undertone difference with the two blushes stacked on top of each other. You can actually tell now. I'm so excited and I will, maybe by the fall sale, I can add more of those shades to my collection. <laughs> maybe I'll just have to wait for the fall sale for those, I guess. <laughs> because oopsie poopsie, I did not place another order. Kind of regret forgetting, but, but that's what my cheeks are looking like. I always do love to go heavy on the blush. That is just how... I do things on this channel. I love it. And I know a lot of you guys love it too because I feel like blush is so underrated. Even with blush being super popular towards the end of last year and this year, I still feel like it's just not appreciated as much as it needs to be. I still feel like we're just not there yet. Because like the only thing about blush that has really truly been trendy is that same shade of hot pink, which 
I love it too. At this point, I have way too many hot pink blushes and I still want more. But like, that's like the only thing people are talking about is hot pink blush. But like, where's the trendy orange blush? Where's the trendy red blush? Where's like the trendy any other color of blush besides hot pink? Like, I still feel like there is no true appreciation for blush like there has been for other products in trends. The only lip product, I, I got two lip products from Sephora, but I don't think either of them will be a good fit here. I got the balm the candy glaze stick in pink satisfaction i really wanted to get the nude one too but again money i do love this shade though i love the formula of the ysl candy glaze stick so i do love pink satisfaction and then i also got the i'm gonna I'm, I'm looking for i'm like totally right now into trying to find a blackened lip balm and i wanted to try this because the isamaya lipstick is almost a hundred dollars i'll be honest i think the shape of it is hilarious so like for those who don't know i am ace so I really, the shape of it for me is just pure comedy. I think it's hilarious and I want nothing more than to walk into a church and put it on. Like that's we, that, that's what I would do. But it's not, the only thing stopping me from buying it truthfully is the fact that it's almost a hundred bucks. Like where's the, what? No. It, please don't tell me that that lipstick costs as much as a whole Byredo eyeshadow palette. Like please do not tell me these things. It is $84 on Selfridges instead, but that's not much better. So I wanted to try my other options before resorting to that. And then by the end of it, I will have cumulatively spent more money than if I had just gotten that lipstick. Smart, I know, I'm, I'm very intelligent. So I wanted to try this first. I don't know if this is going to match with the warm for this look, right? But I'm gonna try it on camera because I haven't actually used this yet, so we'll try it for the first time. If this doesn't work out, the next thing I really wanna try is MAC is bringing back those balms in like a whole rainbow of colors. And I, name aside, actually find them to be really interesting and there is gonna be a black. So I do intend on picking that up when it comes out if this is not to my satisfaction and probably just because why not anyways. And then the other one that I thought about getting is from Risa Bay's new makeup brand, 2x4. She has these lip chain lip changers, I think is what it's called. There's like a lavender, there's like a red, there's like a nude, and then there's the black. I'm really interested in those, but I'm concerned the black may be too sheer for me. Like the reason I'm so interested in the Isamayo one is because I've seen Teresa is dead put it on. I know exactly what it looks like on her lips. It's actually quite pigmented, and I so I know I'd like it. But the 2x4, I haven't really seen many reviews on it, and of course Risa Bay's own demonstration of it is filtered as all get up, so it's hard for me to tell if it's actually pigmented or not. Buying it from Beauty Box Korea with shipping and the upcharge that Beauty Box Korea already charges, I mean I might as well as get the Isamaya lipstick because at least I know what I'm getting there. With Beauty Box Korea, if I buy it and don't like it, I have no recourse. So that was the other option. So those are the three things I'm considering trying. I mean, knowing me, I will probably eventually cave and get the lipstick, which is why I'm hesitant to try other options because I don't know how long I'll last before it just ends up in my collection on accident. But first, let's try this! Yay! <laughs> so this is the Givenchy Balm. It is in the shade 11. I think it's called literally just black pink. It's literally just called that, right? So I'm going to line my lips first with Incognito from Buxom. It's just what I've been using lately. I really miss these. The new ones are really drying. I don't like them. I like didn't even realize these had been discontinued until like maybe like half a year ago. I especially like this shade. It's so light. I can really feather it down on my lower lip, which really helps to shorten the length between the bottom of my lip and my chin because my chin is just inhumanely long. I'm gonna try this, you guys. We're gonna try this together. It's promising. I am concerned it's gonna be a little bit ph -y. Oh, it's not as like thick as I expected. It's actually really thin. I thought it would be like a thicker balm and gloss consistency or glossy stick consistency, but it's actually super thin. I'll try- I'm gonna layer this. It, it's, it's almost too thin to really hydrate my lips even. Oh, this is tingling and burning. I don't- I don't dis- I, I'm not like completely averse to tingly lip products, but I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of it either, but this is tingly. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna put on a second layer. I mean, it is a lot more pigmented than I expected. Probably the level of pigment I would get from the Isamaya one. And it's not really doing any funky pinky things like lip pH style. It's not really doing anything like that, so I'm happy. Oh, I did see also the reveal that there's gonna be a black lip balm from Givenchy as well but I don't know how thin that will be. Like the reason I didn't pick up the Pat McGrath Astro Balm in black is because 
I saw the swatches of that on YouTube and it literally looked so thin. Okay, so it does definitely feel way more hydrating now and I think you can see it really just like smoothed out my lips, juiced them up a little bit. My lips do look less wrinkly. It is quite thin though, it really just... It doesn't even feel like a lip oil. It's so thin, but it is tingly. <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of the feeling. I don't dislike it, but I'm not like the biggest fan of it either. And I think you guys can tell this is not gonna fit the vibe of this look, but I just wanted to try it on camera with you guys. I can see this working with the perfect makeup look. This is not that. So I'm gonna put something else on top of it and then we'll call this look done. I am going to take a little bit of Peachy Party. This is, it's, a, it's one of the limited edition shades. I like to collect the limited edition powder kiss liquid lip colors, but I never really ever get them at full price. I always wait for them to go on sale. And I know the one from last year, the wine one, those shades were 40% off, but I just money. So I'm probably gonna miss those, but I'm just gonna use this really quickly. I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna basically just go over it and then I'm just gonna purse my lips together a bunch. So it's gonna be a really weird color mix, but it should still be fine. And then I'm just gonna Make sure it's a little more visible in the middle. Yeah, there we go. It's a little bit of almost like a custom lip mix and it's a little bit, as you can see, it's not quite this shade. It is a little bit blackened. <laughs> and my lips are hydrated because my lips are otherwise pretty dry. I do try to my best to keep my lips really hydrated when cold sores are healing. So this honestly is, this is good. This, this is good. All right, I recently have really, I did buy, um, I did get a couple of hair care products from the Sephora sale, so um, I'm not gonna, obviously I'm not mentioning those here, but that is what I did get was um, more hair care than anything. So I'm hoping my hair looks nicer today than it usually does. But yeah, this is, my hair has been looking nice. Thank you to whoever on Instagram. I don't know if you watch my videos, but if you do, Thank you for recommending to me the pattern hair mist because I've been looking for something like that without having to source it from Korea. I had been hoping to find one in America just to be easier for me to get a hold of more regularly. And somebody on Instagram messaged me when I posted my desperate plea for help with my dry hair to try the pattern hair mist, so I got it. First off, it was only $18 on Ulta. I love that. But second off, it works and it smells really nice. I feel like my hair has a lot more body to it now that it's more hydrated, and it was only 18 bucks, like, hello, yes. But this is gonna be my finished look. I love how everything turned out except for the eyebrows, but my bangs cover them, so it's fine. So I am really happy to say that everything from the Sephora haul that I'm using for the first time has been overwhelmingly positive, no disappointments at all, which sometimes I get stuff, and I'm like, why did I get that? So this time I really tried my best to be to be like, okay, just because it's going viral, just because everyone's talking about it, just because I'm hearing through the grapevine that TikTok is talking about it, because I don't actually use TikTok, just because of that does not mean I should get it. Like, I was really trying to tell myself, please, like, I spent a lot of last year buying things thinking that I would review it on YouTube and get more views. And like, I like, I didn't buy anything I disliked just to film with it. But if I only like 60% liked it, I would still convince myself to get it and then review it quickly for YouTube. But then like, I'm not that kind of person. I'm not quick. I'm not able to get things up as quickly as other YouTubers, which bless them. Like some people on this, some people on this platform, their work ethic just truly is astounding. Like, but I just can't do that. Especially these days, it's just not in my capabilities. It physically, I just can't. Mentally, I just can't. I just can't keep track of things like that. It stresses me out to have to do that. So I would keep buying things and then I would either forget to use them entirely or I would just be using them off camera or let's not mince words here, I was wasting a lot of money. So this year I've really tried to pull back and be like, okay, if I only like it 60%, I'm not gonna get it or I'm gonna really think twice about getting it. Like I'm gonna think to myself, I'm getting it because I want it, not because I'm gonna review it, not for the views, that aside. So I think I had a really great haul. The only thing I would say that I really bought into the hype would be these guys, which I will use in a separate video, but I will be honest, I have been very curious about the Rare Beauty liquid blush formula ever since Rare Beauty was launched as a brand, so it was only a matter of time before I got around to it, so even though these were kind of sort of silly at the same time, I've been wanting to try these for over a year now, so it was about time. Worth and virtue, I feel like these shades are kind of up my alley anyway, so I'm excited to try these. I will definitely do a video with these later. I like everything that I put on my face. I know there was a lot of rambling, but I hope I'm gonna probably title this video something like Sephora haul, but also catch up with me so that way people know. So you knew going into it 
that I was going off track a lot. <laughs> so yeah, I, I got like probably three and a half hours of sleep in the past 24 hours, so please excuse me. Um, but yeah, my kittens need feeding. I am 15 minutes late. They're going, they are probably screaming at me. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. If you have any questions about any of the products I used, by all means, feel free to ask. And I definitely look forward to coming back and filming again very soon. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.